Hello everyone, I am Edith Bell and I'm a YouTuber. My channel's name is The Abongus Lifestyle. I'm into fashion, lifestyle, entertainment, like everything, I'm into everything. So today I decided to help my friend do a video about some mistakes I encountered or some difficulties I encountered when I started teaching English in China. The truth is I made a lot of mistakes when I first came to China and started teaching English. But I think making mistakes is to, is part of the learning pro, uh, process. So the first mistake like I made and most people make is trying to follow accent and not phonetics. When I, when I talk about accent and not phonetic, for example, when you come to China, oh, the Chinese believe like, oh, you are a non-native speaker, you're from Africa, and your accent is so, so uh, absurd, like they have never heard uh, some of those kind of accent. So the first thing people make, the first mistake people make, or the first mistake I did was, I was trying to speak like an American or speak like a British, but that wasn't really the point. That wasn't really the point. Because you speak like that, but your phonetic is so, so bad. So it's still a big problem because when you pronounce some words, they are like, ah, what are you talking about? You know, like for example, in Africa, we say cu uh, cucumber. But here you can see come like you want to use a good accent and the pronunciation will still be like cucumber, which is wrong. So what I'm just trying to say is like, let's try to know the right pronunciations of the words, not trying to use accent. Use your normal accent, but speak a clear, clear words. Like I know how the how the words are, the phonetics. Cucumber uh, is like cucumber, so know your phonetics. I think that's the best thing. So the second mistake is like people just uh, like we just assume. Like I assume, you know, the way the teachers back in Africa do. They just assume that the, the, the kids know some of those things. Are you understanding? So the, the kids know some of those things. So what I'm, I'll advise um, new teachers is don't assume. Anything you want to teach these kids, take your time and teach them. These kids don't know, like, they need to stand up. They, they don't even know the meaning of stand up. So you need to do the actions. So incorporate TPR, that's total body response. So you need to teach them first those rules, class rules and uh, the things you want them to, to do because some of them don't even know they need to the, they need to stand in a quay or the sea. They don't know. So you need to teach them first. If you stand up, you do the, uh, the, the signs, stand up because normally you're teaching English or for, yeah, teach, you're teaching English to non-native speakers like they have never learned it. So they don't know. They can know in Chinese, but you as an English teacher or you as you just like your first time teaching kids, they don't know this. So try to teach them those class rules and what do you want them to know before you begin your class so when I came I was making this mistake I was just as you mean they know I can just come and say oh stand up no these kids don't know you need to should do the actions to tell them to stand up and tell them to sit down if you wanted to do something show the examples so always try to show examples to the kids before you begin your classes or tell them the rules and show them by using your actions like the actions before you begin your class that's the mistake i was making that's why i lost a lot of jobs because people uh, when you're dealing with kids you need to use your body body language first especially to non-native speakers so the the third mistake uh, i was doing is like i was not like voicing out my ideas or what i want you know uh Sometimes you have good ideas to give because every school you go or everywhere you go to teach is different. So I think like your your ideas are useful. I wasn't giving like my ideas. Anything they say, I say yes, which I know it's wrong. So what I can tell new teachers or anyone planning to begin teaching, especially English as a, uh, uh, an, as an ESL teacher, I would say voice your ideas if you have opinions or if you have a, something you want to change in the school you can tell them because they brought you there because they want your opinion and the things you know to improve their own standards so 
when you give them these ideas when they think the idea is good they they love you and they will not want to let you go but when you are there and you don't want to speak out you have ideas and keep to yourself they feel like they are not profiting anything from you just the teaching and even your teaching and there's some people who have a lot of good ideas but they are scared like if i give this idea or if i incorporate this in my classes maybe the school won't want it which is a lie so what i always tell I'll say is I made those mistakes. So if you have an idea or have a new games or new activities you want to share with your your school where you are like where you're working so they can incorporate I think you can do it don't be stingy with those ideas because the more you give your ideas they will think like wow this person knows what the person is doing but if you are so quiet and you don't want to share your ideas I think they was like ah then what are we really profiting from this person if they see a better teacher with better ideas or better uh, communication skills the person they will, will fuck you up so Please share your ideas and don't be stingy with the ideas. Sometimes forget like this person, they will steal it and use it. It, it doesn't matter. The more you give ideas, the more you get, get new ideas. So share your ideas with the schools you work with and uh, anything you want to incorporate, you want them to add, you can add it too. So that's what has made me to be better now. Some of the, I try to correct these mistakes after some years and now I think any school I go there we will keep going and also there's a, a big mistake this one is a big mistake I made I was afraid to learn from others like I was shy like I feel like why are these people these people are still like my African brothers or these are Chinese why should I learn from them but that was wrong because when I started bringing myself down, like, I don't know anything. When I started relaxing, like, oh, damn, I don't know years or one or two skills from others. My teaching, be my teaching skills began to be magnificent. So I just think, like, we need to try to learn from others. Don't be shy. Don't think, like, oh, because this person is my friend or this person is my brother, the person cannot teach you. Bring down yourself and learn new things from others, even Chinese, or even like the, the your colleagues, even like, uh, not even your African or what your country meet, but I think your colleagues at school, they must know something that you don't know. So try to watch their classes, try to see the games they use, try to see how they interact with kids and learn from them. So what I will say here is like, what makes me to be better now is because I learn from, anybody I meet in the teaching field any school I go I try to learn even if even is from the, the Chinese teachers that don't even understand even from the babies I learn something because sometimes you go to class you make a mistake some kids even correct you do you know that so you need to try to learn everything be be smart to learn from everyone and don't don't be shy don't be shy if you want to be a good teacher, don't be shy. You, you can learn from anybody. Okay, so the last point and the most important point I would tell my people out there, and that's a mistake I made, because when you travel abroad, especially if you're from Africa, people just make you feel inferior. You feel like uh, the whites are better than you, the Chinese are better than you. So anywhere you go, you are like, damn, I must just succumb to whatever these people say or whatever they do. So as a new teacher at that time, I was like, anything they say, if like they want to pay me any amount, I'm like, okay, okay, I will take it. Because you feel like if they don't give you this money, another school won't take you because you're an African, because they even tell you, because truly is, the truth is, most countries are so racist, they make you feel like you're an African, You we can't pay you this amount of money, we can't do this, but that's a big lie. Know your standard. Don't make anyone make you feel in, inferior. If you want to settle for less, good, but let it not be because of the pressure from the people, because you're black or because you, you they think you don't fit. If you know, like, damn, I can do this, I can do it better, then nobody should let you feel inferior. You should 
try to put your standard. Yes, you are African and so what? You are talented. You have the skills. You can teach the kids. You know what you're doing. So always prove yourself to them. Like even if I'm African, I know what I'm doing. I'm talented. I'm not that kind of people. Oh, I'm not just anybody. That's what made me me who I am today. Like I'm better in the teaching field and I have choice. But when I came, I didn't have choice. Like seriously, anything you just you just say ah. Hey, if a white can take this amount of money, then you are black. We can't pay you this money. Push it. Why? I work more than them. You even work more than white or even more than any of these countries. We blacks, we have different energy from these people. So don't let anybody or any school make you feel inferior. Try to do your best. Don't ask for more when you know you won't do better. So if you're asking higher fees or higher price or higher salary, make sure you do a great work. Make sure you do a great work. That's what I can say to my new, to new teachers or new people, especially if they're coming to China or anywhere because the world nowadays is so racist. So you as an African teacher or an African try to put your standard. You are not less than anybody. They will always make you feel less, but know your worth, know your worth and try to keep your mouth shut because some of you go and start telling them about yourself, how maybe how you're suffering. That's when they take you low. So keep your standard. Some things keep to yourself. Even you're suffering back there, but you're talented. So keep some things to yourself and try to hustle and you will be better as the day goes go by. As it goes by or go by, whatever. So just try to do your best and God will see you through. That's all. Thank you.